Starting out with a dry wheel head, take that wedged piece of clay, and I suggest for a seven to eight inch cylinder about a pound and a half to a pound and three quarters of clay. The main thing is consistency. So have 10 balls of the same weight all wedged up and ready to go. Get your hands wet. That lubrication is very important because friction is your enemy. Grab the ball of clay and just squeeze in. Pretend like it's an axle on a car and you're trying to straighten that axle. And this is called coning or wheel wedging. So I've, I've coned it up once. I'm gonna then push it down with my thumb and my, on my right hand. Then I'm gonna cone it up again just by squeezing in, just squeezing inward with my two hands. Trying not to use my fingers as much as the palm of my hands because my fingers make too many indentations in it. Then I'll push it down. I use my left hand thumb this time. It doesn't really matter which way you go. There's no reason why the clay should be flopping your hands around like that. You just hold it in one place. If it's pushing you around, you're not doing your job. You're not using enough force. You're not leaning into it. You need to brace your arms on something. Lean into it and center it. There's a lot of different ways to center. This way is probably the best way for beginners to start out with as far as the success that I've seen. My left hand, I'm trying not to rest it too much on here, on the wheel head itself. That abrasion can start to wear down your hand. On me, it doesn't matter, but when you start out, it's very important to, to look at that. So, okay, I got, got my left hand leaning in towards it, and my top hand, using this part of my hand, like a knife edge, on down on top of it, and I'm pushing in and I'm pushing down and I equally, I find that equal pressure between the two. So my top hand isn't going up and down, my bottom uh, or outside hand, my left hand isn't going back and forth. If you're, if you're going all over, you're not using enough pressure. So you need to apply that pressure gradually, a little bit more, a little bit more until the two meet up and then slowly release. Some people lock their fingers together Bracing your arms against your gut, and right now I'm throwing while I'm standing, so I can lean into it and use my body weight. It's better on your back, I believe, so, you know, that's why I, I stand and throw. If you're sitting down and throwing, you can brace your elbows into your thighs. You need to brace your arms at first because you have not honed up the dexterity or muscle in your arms to keep them from flopping around. So. Once it's centered, you know your outside hand and your top hand aren't flopping around. Again, that shape, somewhat of a rounded shape. Now, the best way I found for beginners, I like to use my thumb and open it up really quick, but the best way for beginners is to point to the sky with your right hand, grab your knuckles, hold them in with your left hand, and lay your finger on top and just take that front digit and twist it into the clay and just go down it'll find its own hole. You just push it in. And then pull it out directly back towards your belly and kick it over a notch, like I said, to make that notch for your, your uh, left hand to start. And then compressing the bottom is important. I put my right hand thumb down on the bottom and go to the outside, down on the bottom and go to the outside, down on the bottom and go to the outside. And that smooths out the bottom for any imperfections that you may have put in it when you open it, but it also compresses it. The whole time I was working, I was working with my left hand on the left side of the wheel, on the left side of the ball, my right hand on top. That was the centering technique that I want you to try. The actual opening technique, I said, to grab your hand and, and find it and then pulling it open. And now the throwing technique. Here's the third step. In the throwing technique, I'll use a sponge, I'll pinch it between my finger and my thumb, my middle finger and my thumb. Then I'll use my pointer finger against that as the pressure that I'm going to push onto this donut with. 
On the inside, I'm going to press against somewhere in here. So I'll get my fingers inside and I'll press against that. Now with this first pull, I'm going to use primarily my right hand or my outside hand pressure. And I'm going to look at this as a compass, north, east, south, west. So the top of the wheel is north and then east, south, and west. I'm never going to work around west or south. I'm going to primarily work around north and east, but I'm going to pick somewhere north, northeast to keep my hands at. You don't want your hands to follow the donut. You want to keep them in one spot while you're working. One spot and then follow upward in that one spot. So you pick a direction. Pick northeast or east. Now, my first pull, I'm just, again, this is the pressure and I'm pushing towards the center and it has nowhere else to go but up. Now, I follow it up, I go slowly up. You see how slow I went? However, what you really want to look at is the way this is a spring. It's like a slinky that's not really tight but not going downstairs yet. You don't want it to be a slinky that's all sprung. You don't want a spring that's sprung. You want a spring that's kind of tight. You want your throwing line somewhat together, not too tight, but um, that's a matter of preference. That you can be very tight and precise with it, but you're kind of wanting a spring that's sort of unsprung slightly, okay? So your first pull should be a cone. Then you go back down to the bottom, the wheel head on the inside and the outside, and do it again. Push towards the center. You're squeezing against your inside finger, but you're not really pushing outward. If you push outward, you'll get a bowl. If you're getting a bowl or any kind of shape that's not conical this way, that means that you're using your inside hand possibly too much to make a cylinder. So to make a basic cylinder, try not to use your inside hand too much. Alright, now I've added water each time. And I'm going to go back down here. And I'm going to pull it one more time here. And that's three pulls right there. Quite often I do three pulls and then one shaping pull. So you have a basic cylinder, which is the embodiment of most vertical shapes. Off of that basic cylinder, you then can shape it quite extensively depending on how much pulling you did, how thin the walls are. So I'm gonna shape this one against the rib. Now I'm using my inside hand and I'm shaping it. So I'm going to shape this basic shape here. Like a mug shape. Or a small pitcher possibly. So the rib not only cleans off those lines from throwing, but it also compresses the clay further, which kind of helps you get strength back in the clay after it's sitting there absorbing water, it uh, squeezes that water out, let's say, you know, it, it's a way to take that sponge, the clay is like a sponge, it's a way to take that sponge and clean it up, get the goop out of the sponge, and that adds strength. Now, the last thing you can do is you can take a chamois with the web of your, in between your hand or a piece of plastic and finish that lip. Next thing you do is you have all that slop all over your hand. Before you clean them off, cut the piece off the wheel and holding your wire down on the wheel like I just showed you and then pulling it under is the best way to cut it off. It cuts it flush off instead of having the wire rise up. Then wipe your hands off on the bucket, clean them up, take your towel, make sure your hands are dry, not totally dry but you know, clean. Go down to the wheel head, caress the pot, just touch it slightly, tip it over to one side, and move it over to your wear board.